Hey guys, it's me Topix here, back at you guys with another comic book video, and today I'm going to be just doing... <laughs> Hi, my name is Tomplex, and welcome to another comic book video. Today, I'm going to be talking about comics... Feature me, restart. <sighs> oh boy. Hey guys, it's me Tomplex here, back at you guys with another comic book video, and today I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different. Today, I'm going to be talking about stuff and or relating to Image Comics. One of the top selling publishers in the world. Seven artists left Marvel and basically told them to go fuck themselves. They had some pretty great companies in there. Future Me Hero, all the companies listed. One of them broke away and then joined DC in that Shadowstorm. And it was owned by Jim Lee who became an artist and is now the president of DC Comics. Way to go, Jim. And then Robert Kirkman joined on and then became an image partner. And then I think he did Skybound Productions, I think it's called, Skybound. They do The Walking Dead and Invincible and so many other great comics. But today, I'm gonna be looking at, at some of the classic stuff and talking about what they should make as a collected edition. It includes even some of the, the Shadowstorm stuff that was sold to DC if they do it as a celebration of Image Comics or to celebrate Jim Lee. Just to be clear, I'm not paid by any member of Image Comics. None of this will probably ever be heard by any of the people at Image Comics or the publicists or the editors. None of this is ever gonna be heard. Hi Image or DC, big fan. I'm j this is just purely from a fan's perspective. This is just a warning ahead of time, but this is what in my opinion, should be collected as like a compendium or an omnibus or a series of collected editions in the future. Hopefully. So number one, I'm gonna be going with Wetworks by Wills Protasio. I feel like Wills Protasio is very much an unsung hero of Image Comics. When you look at some of the main members, you think Jim Lee, Tom McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, and those guys are amazing. They made some pretty epic stuff. Young Blood was the first book for Image Comics and that sold like one and a half million copies. Pretty awesome. And for a first book to be published too. And then Spawn did two million copies and still remains the biggest selling indie comic of all time. It's one of my favorites of all time. But in my opinion, Wills Protasio is very much an unsung hero. He has a great style of artwork. I, I, Wills Protasio, if you ever see this, don't be mad, but I'm gonna be putting out some of your artwork. His artwork is just phenomenal. I love the inking. He does a lot of, I think he does a lot of his own inkings. I don't know if he does much of pencil work anymore. I think he did recently for Iron Fist, but man, some of his inks are just fabulous and so well done. And I really would love to see all this come to light at some point in a collected edition. Because I think it was published under Wildstorm and that eventually got sold under DC. And that's why the Authority is now a main part into the DC canon. Same with Wildcats. And the Authority is going to ma make a, play a major play in the new Superman movie and also have their own project in the new DCU. So, awesome. But I feel like Wetworks, just looking at some of the covers for these things, it is just fabulous and I, I keep using that word but it's just beautifully done the colors are eye-popping the covers are just magnificent and from some of the panels that I've seen it actually looks like a pretty amazing comic I would be really excited to read it because a lot of the old issues are hard to find and very hard to get and even if you do again they might be in very rough condition or if you still keep them sealed you won't actually be able to read them. So I'd love to, for some of this to be seen in a collected edition at some point. And even if it's in Wildstorm or still owned by Wills Protasio, it would still be awesome to see it in a collected, like that whole series in a collected edition at some point in the future. Because I love Wills Protasio. I think the ever, I think the first ever Wills Protasio thing I ever read or seen was during Heroes Reborn. And if you are a huge image comic member fan or like a comics fan like I am, you'll know specifically what comic I'm referencing and that's the Invincible Iron Man or just Iron Man 
for the Heroes Reborn storyline. Jim Lee did a lot of the writing and the script work was also done by Jeff Loeb and then Jeff Loeb took over when I think Jim Lee fully committed himself to Fantastic Four. If that, if memory serves me right, if not, I'm getting my information horribly wrong. But Will Spatasio did all the artwork and um, so did Jim Lee with some of the artwork inside, but w Will Spatasio did all the art and honestly, it's one of my favorite Iron Man stories to this date. The eyes and the expressions are just so amazing. You can, like, the eyes are the windows to the soul. He was talking about doing some of the eyes first, and it was great because you could see some of them lower their faces, have an evil grin, and then their eyes just, like, have this deep, dark soul, and then you could tell they were evil. Like, you know these were bad guys, but then there was this malicious intent that really shot you in the, like, hit you in this heart like a spear. And the art was just amazing. I love the design of the Iron Man suit. It's actually one of my favorite designs to this point. Will Spartacio, big fan. I can't wait, wait to see what you do in the future. I would love to see it at some point. Next one, I think is also a Wills Potassio one. There's a lot There's a lot of stuff in the original members. So I'm trying to make sure there's an even balance. Um, there's not much Todd McFarlane on here because a lot of his stuff is ma is mainly focused, because a lot of his stuff is mainly focused on Spawn. But the next one I'm doing is Stone. And some of these I haven't even heard of before until like researching this a couple days ago and looking at some of these and I thought, I wonder what, it created, what the creators did and some of the comics they worked on. And Stone was one that came up and I just scrolled again like I did with What Works through some of the covers, some of the art on the inside and it was just magnificent for the same reasons I'm putting this on this list as I did with What Works. Next up, we got a Jim Valentino book, and if you know J Jim Valentino's creation of Image, then you'll know exactly what I'm referencing. The guy who breaks backs himself, Shadowhawk. They did a volume one of a complete collection of this way back, I think in 2013. And they never did a complete collection, volume two with the rest. But I would love to see like a compendium, like the Spawn compendiums at some point that does all the issues including stuff with like image united and the last shadow hawk stuff like that and see all that come to fruition because i love jim again i love jim valentino's art i think he's a publicist at dc uh, not dc <laughs> i think he's a publisher at image comics now or runs like an editorial bit so i don't know if he does a lot of art stuff anymore but the art he did for guardians of the galaxy is also pretty epic but shadow hawk is such a fascinating character the design was so captivating to me i think subconsciously it created a basis for one of my comic book characters that i'm writing that i will not say who until i actually manage to get this thing off the ground i, I haven't read any shadowhawk comics but i've seen some of this stuff and i see this one panel he breaks the guy's back oh my leg and it's just amazing the colors and the action like the way the chest puffs out as shadowhawk thrusts his hey I got a fan here and, and it's blowing away my paper. But the way like his, he thrusts his knee in and then it shows in his chest popping out and the crack that you can actually feel like, ah, my back. I just found it so fascinating. And it was such a cool concept. Like you think of Batman, he murders people, but he doesn't really like puts them, he, he, he will sometimes, but he, he never really does like a full body cast type thing. He does sometimes. I didn't say all the time, but sometimes he does. Just look at the Arkham video games. Talk, or I'll crush every bone in your body. Shadowhawk, as a person who's a, from what I understand, a, a detective who's also a vigilante, that is a cool concept seeing the justice system from a different point of view while also seeing it from the other side as a cop while also being a vigilante that is a cool concept and that is something i also want to see some more of next up a classic if which i found out about like a month ago existed and then they did oversized hard covers which are only like this big they weren't really oversized but Maybe they'll do like a full omnibus hardcover because I think it now belongs to DC or somebody. I don't know. Uh, it's Sam Keith's The Max. I am amazed by the story. There's something about it that kind of reminds me of The Sandman, but also is so real to like a human aspect of it, of it being like a human, a guy who pretends to be a human. Because this guy, he is not human. This guy is... He's like an idea of like a kid's drawing. And I think that's so fascinating because because 
he goes in like the dreams of like these planes and then this I forgot her name. I think it's the Leopard Queen. My favorite moment is from uh, this clip I saw of the MTV animated show where the bad guy with this blonde head grabs a CPR dummy from the car. He says later on, he says, you knew that was my CPR dummy, right? And then Max walks away. But he's like, he has this body, this person who seems totally chill with it. It's like, now surrender, hopping boy, or I shall add this lady to my score as he's holding a gun. Now surrender, hopping boy, or this charming young chippy is added to my score. You killed my hostage. You killed my hostage. You killed my hostage! Ouch. He went through the three stages of damn in that moment. But honestly, this is just so cool. I know there was a thing that Sam Keith did a crossover with Batman and the Max for an Arkham Asylum thing. Dreams in Arkham Asylum, I think it's called. Whatever it is. But I would love to just see like the Max as a complete story. And I've been trying to hold that off before I read the Max until I read like that Batman and the Max story. I know like there were a ton of legal issues with the Max from what I hear. And honestly, I just hope it gets printed because it, it seems like such a beloved character that I'd love to see it at some point or another in like a full complete compendium like trade paperback or a hardcover omnibus. Next up, starting with the book that started it all at Image, Rob Liefeld's Youngblood. Now for me, I really would love to see like the compendiums or like a complete hardcover or like paperback volumes of the entire timeline of Youngblood, even the thing, even the comic that tied into Spawn, where Chapel goes after Spawn and then the Youngbloods go after Chapel. I think I, I think they never do that with the Spawn compendiums, but they reference it, and I'm like, what the hell happened in this jump? And then I figure out it was tying into Youngblood. And I think it was called Blood Hunt. If not, I'm mistaken for the modern Marvel title or the original Marvel title that was called Blood Hunt when they were trying to, like, grab off of the titles and, like, concepts that Image was doing that were selling well. It's like, could you be more obvious? But yeah, that storyline with Chapel and Spawn and, like, fighting in the alleys and then Spawn killing Chapel, that would be a really great timeline. And then I know they retcon that later with Jessica Chambers, I forget her name, she Spawn. taking over as the person who did kill Spawn, but I'd love to see more of that character, Chapel. He's fascinating in a way. You don't, and, the, and those are some really great characters. You don't like them, but they're so well written that you can't help but be invested in them and like them because they're so well written. It's kind of like how white people like Loki. I love to just see like the different like series come together through different timelines and like some of the modern Youngblood stuff. Cause I just love some of the classic Rob Liefeld art. I love the pouches. I love like the big dynamic muscles for superheroes because for me, why I like Rob Liefeld's like big dynamic style is because these superheroes is because for comics, superheroes are supposed to be or are somewhat like the peak human being. Like the like if you look at this drawing or look at Dr. Manhattan, they're drawn as like the peak human physique. And you look at bodybuilders, people in these huge bodybuilder like things you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger who is the basis for the famous Captain America drawing no hate towards it uh I know it's infamous I think it's good um but I know it was rushed I think I think it was a rushed piece I'm probably gonna be missing a lot so that's just gonna be weird I like some of the characters like gymnast poses all these different attack styles they're the peak human form and that's what I like about it. Some of like the gymnast poses, the way they fight, their peak human condition. And that really like makes it attractive to me because it's supposed to be big and dynamic. And that's kind of cool. I love a lot of the, I like the modern Rob Liefeld stuff. And I think it's really cool. Uh, my favorite is Deadpool Bad Blood, but my favorite of his surprisingly his captain america run and i love x-force he's the creator of deadpool and he created x-force and it was just amazing dude but my favorite run and it was the first captain america run i read i liked it i liked it he did the plot and jeff lloyd did the script i think 
but his art was just so eye-popping, eye-catching, the dynamic poses, and even some of the covers where I was just like, wow, wee wah <laughs> the cartoon eyes were, this is, I'm not trying to make fun of it, I'm just trying to be like, it, it really was, like, boy, boy, boy. <laughs> with the R and I just loved it. It leapt off the page and I loved it so much. It was so cool. I'll always geek out about 90s comics. I love 90s comics art. Speaking of, I got to print a new comic. It's Gotham After Midnight and art by Kelly Jones. I was really attracted to the pencils, but the color work was just amazing. This is a random sidebar, but this is just showing why I love 90s comics so much. It has a foreword by, um. I think it's John Carpenter. Yeah, John Carpenter, who I think did Halloween. No, he did The Thing. It's a horror story. I think it's Scarecrow-centric. The green, the fear gas. But I would love to read this because this seems like an interesting story. And I'm going to show up some of the pages of this work. I actually wanted to interrupt to point out that this is not a nice comic. This was made during 2008 to 2009, 12-issue miniseries. So I just want to throw that in. Now back to the video. Anyway. Back to Image. So yeah, I'd love to see a lot of the Unblood stuff. I don't know who owns the rights to it. Hopefully Rob does, um, because I'd love to see collections of like the entire Youngblood stuff, the Titans of Spawn, and stuff like that, because it is just wonderful, and I can't stop loving it. Rob Liefeld, again, big fan. Love you. Love Deadpool. Next up, going into Top Cow and Mark Silvestri, one of my other favorites is Cyberforce Collection 2 and 3. I have Volume 1, and this is just amazing. One of the issues in this, I think it's Issue 8 of Volume 2 in the storyline, because Volume 1 was Cyberforce 10 Minute of War, and that was four issues, and then they did Volume 2, which is still, which was ongoing to a certain extent. That collects the 13 issue, the first 13 issues of that volume storyline, but Tom McFarlane did issue eight of that one. And again, you just look at the back. You see Rip Claw by Mark Silvestri. It is amazing. And I just am amazed by it. The art and the colors, again, are so eye-popping and wonderful. It, is, it even has a tie-in with Jim Lee in during Wildcats. Cats being covert action team. But this is pretty badass. I love it. I love... It was originally, I think, going to be an X-Men book that they are mutants, but they're cybernetically enhanced. And they mentioned that they are mutated, they have powers, but they're si but those powers are slightly hidden. So they're cybernetically enhanced to release those powers. At least that's what I come to understand reading this book. And this book got on a cliffhanger. So I want two and three of these hardcover editions to come out. Top Cow, Mark Silvestri, again, love you. I love your art, but please, I need more. This is my cocaine. Mark Silvestri does an amazing job of drawing all of these. And honestly, I would put in a pre-order just for, if it ever is announced, just to pre-order the hardcover collections for these because these are just beautifully done. Also, you got some cool model bits in the back with the ladies of Cyberforce. God, I'm gross. The Complete Cyberforce Volume 2 and 3. Just saying, you probably are busy doing the new Witchblade, which is a new Witchblade, which is a new Witchblade comic run coming out. It looks awesome. I have to admit, I haven't read it yet because I'm gonna reread the original Witchblade, which is gonna be on this list. But I'll get to that in a minute. All right, so next up we got this character, which I had no idea even existed, called the Pit. I never even knew the Pit existed. I think until I read Cyberforce, because I think he makes an appearance in Ten Men of War. The Pit! And honestly, when I saw it, I was like, whoa! The art, again, is eye-catching. The art always attracts me to the story because that's what I want. If the art fits the story, I'll buy that book. Art matters. It tells the story, per it has to tell the story perfectly. But this looks amazing. The Pit looks good. So I'd love to see like a collected edition. <laughs> Excuse me. I got the complete Witchblade hardcover one and two because Volume 3 is already out, but Volume 1 and 2 are out of print, I can't find them, and I need that I need to read them. Because this actually goes into the next point, which is also reprinting the Complete Darkness hardcover Volume 1. Because I was reading The Darkness, and I found out it took place in the same universe as Witchblade, and that universe is a Witchblade-centric universe, so I had to read Witchblade before I read so for me, I would have to read Witchblade before I read The Darkness. 
And so I gave the books away. I'll buy them again because that if they ever reprint them. But then I would because I want to read Witchblade and then go on to read The Darkness because they coincide in the same universe. And I think I in my opinion, one can't exist without the other is what I found when I was reading The Darkness. So I would have to read Witchblade in order to understand more of the darkness and some of that universe fully. They both fascinate me. And I'd love to read them further at some point. Mark Silvestri, I I know you don't really run a lot of the publicist stuff at Top Cow, but please, I just love, I, I love reading your stuff. A lot of your art is just fascinating for me. I'd love to see all this come together at some point or like some of these collected editions get reprinted or come out more, do more collected editions because they're fun. I love reading the whole story as one like binging. It's like binge watching but for comics for me. Next up, we got, I think it's Extreme Studios, but it's a Rob Liefeld book, Evangeline. I think it's being made into a TV series. Again, go Rob! <laughs> Honestly, I've never even discovered Evangeline existed until I followed Rob Liefeld on Instagram. And then I saw, like, they're doing a TV series. And then I went to Amazon, and the stuff is sold out, and, like, not in print anymore. And so I was like, damn it. So I'd love to see like an omnibus or everything that's collecting the Evangeline stuff. Because I want to do that and I want to research more on the character before I go into this TV series knowing nothing. Next up, another Extreme Studios one. Rob, I'm sorry if I if this seems like I'm pandering. It, uh, to all these creators on here who I mentioned, I'm probably going to tag in the story where I post some of this stuff on Instagram. But to these guys, I'm just sorry. I'm sorry that I'm, that I, it seems like I'm badgering, but I'm just giving my fan opinion. I would definitely love to see some of the Brigade stuff at some point. One of the characters looks like Strife. And honestly, Strife has such a cool design from the X-Men books. And I know Rob created Strife, I think. He did. I, he did. I know that. I think. Future me, just tell me. But even just some of the busts, not that kind of busts. But the busts of like the heads of the characters just on the page, it gives you a sense of like the original comics, like the Jack Kirby comics of like, okay, these are the faces, who do they belong to? And then you figure out, and then you relate to each character with their superpowers or like what they do or who they are. But I'd love to see some of that and just see some of these comics. I think it ties into the Youngblood universe. I don't know. I haven't read any of the Youngblood stuff because a lot of it's out of print and I can't find it. We're going back into the Wildstorm territory. Uh, one of them is Stormwatch. Uh, I think Wills Protasio also worked on this one, but I know Jim Lee and Brandon Choi did. They both were coincide with a lot of the, uh, the Shadow Storm. Shadow Storm. Have I been saying it wrong? It's Wild Storm Entertainment. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Well... I'm an idiot. Again, with similar stuff, uh, these two books kind of coincide with each other, so I'm going to list them both, are Stormwatch and Deathblow. These both look amazing. I think they sort of coincide within the Wildcats universe. Again, I wouldn't know. This whole video is also just going off the process of DC reprinting the original Wildcats in a compendium, in a volume one of a compendium. And I am thinking, what else would the image, what else would they reprint for Wildstorm? And then I remember Wildstorm was part of Image. And I remember what, Im and I thought about some of the books that Image did. And I thought, what if they reprinted some of the classic Image stuff? And so I gave my list. Again, the art is so eye-catching. It's beautifully done. Jim Lee and Willis Potasio do some amazing art. Even, like, together, when I watch them on the... When I see... When I saw Rob and Todd and Jim and Wills do, like, a character sketch or, like, a big dynamic panel outline. It wasn't, like, a full panel, but it was, like, an outline on the comic book rates with Stan Lee. Thanks, Stan. Stan, hey, could we take your place? Are we good video hosts? <laughs> oh, Hey guys, guys, that was thrilling. That was really, ah! <laughs> that was really a great show. Um, thank you, folks, and uh, good night. And uh, honestly, it was just pretty amazing just seeing like how Jim and Wills work together, like how how they all work together. Todd and Rob, they just 
uh, Todd, Rob, Jim, and Wils, they had an idea and they all worked together on it. And then they talked about, and they were explaining, like, how would you do certain things? And then they talked about the if in doubt, black it out, black it out rule. If you're not good at something, hide it. Things to go if we could somewhere. clone you, guys, boom, hey, one hey, guy could give advice you know, and the other guy could draw. We forgot, we forgot the, the biggest rule for anything, whether it's drawing, penciling, we forgot it. Wally Woods, famous rule, if in doubt, black, black it, it, out. it out. There it is, now. <laughs> you're not going to draw in feet make sure you're standing at the grass or behind computer boxes or 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 right or right over a body line on the floor if they're running away all right finally this is the mama jamba future me zoom on me not my hamper this is the mama jamba this is the big kahuna this is for all the cojones this one's for all the beans Image United. This has a lot of the image members doing some of the classic stuff. I think the only one they didn't do, they didn't get to join on was Jim Lee, because I think he became, uh, he was still working at DC at the time and he was busy and swamped a lot of stuff and also possibly becoming the head of DC Comics. But it has a lot of the original image members, including their new member who, and who wrote the whole story, Robert Kirkman. Robert Kirkman, Rob Liefeld, Todd McFarland, J Jim Valentino, Mark Silvestri, Will Spertacio, Pertasio and Eric Larson, the seven members. If you, if, uh, Jim Lee didn't become part of it, but for Image United, they got the four issue miniseries, or it was seven issues. But I'd love to see that as like a small trade paperback or like a mini hardcover at some point, just to see the great minds come together and form this amazing book. I'd just love to see that at some point in the future. But honestly, just like any of these, I'd love to see at some point in the future, if there isn't any legal stuff happening. Damn you legal issues. I don't know how to end this video, dude. <laughs> Whew. I just want to see a lot of this come to fruition because I'm a comics fan and I love reading a lot of this stuff and a lot of it's not available anymore in print. And I kind of want to see it happen because I love this stuff. I don't know how, if anybody's still even watching, if anyone's even ever gonna sit through. How many minutes have passed? I've almost surpassed an hour. I spent a whole hour yammering on about this. Jesus. All right, so I better end the video here. Otherwise, I'm gonna lose my audience very fast. But thank you everybody so much for watching. And if the creators I tag are watching, thank you so much for watching. And thank you for making such amazing comics and doing amazing work. It's still going. So thank you everybody so much for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Tap the notification bell so you never miss another video from me. I'm currently working on two movies and a play. So there might be some on and off bits between the videos. It's not as I used to where it was every week I do a video, but hopefully I, can't get back to that schedule at some point because I love doing YouTube and I love talking about what I love and what I love is doing movies, theater, and comics. So I love doing what I do and hopefully I can be a comic creator one day and make great stories like this. So thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time I will see you guys in the next video. Sayonara.